Okay, so now that we will continue our, our computation. So we, we obtain the value of HP is equal to 0 0.5 HP. It says there uh, that our friction horsepower would be 0 0.5 HP times our, times our speed. That's the belt speed, which is 200 fpm divided by 100 fpm so therefore we have 1 hp okay so the next step is to solve for This is step number 10. Solve for. Let's just uh, write HPL. The whole So for HPL, what we need is figure 6.18, and the data that we need is our capacity, uh, C sub M required which is equal to 50 tons per hour okay so this is um, figure 6.18 and this hour uh, you know this our tons per hour of material updated this is 200 and the 50 would be one fourth uh, of this uh, this interval okay so again that's that's uh, quite small for a graph okay uh, let's just okay, let's just say that's 0 0.05 uh, this is 0 0.1 okay so this is this is 0.1, this is 0.2, so let's say it's just half of 0.1, so that's going to be 0 0.05. Okay, so HP is equal to point, uh, 0 0.05. And so, our uh, the horsepower required to lift the material is equal to 0 0.05 HP per foot. Of lift times the the elevation, which is uh, what is that? Times 50, 50 feet. Okay, so let's write it here: 50 feet, and that's gonna be 2.5. Okay, then the next step is to solve for um, horsepower required to move the material horizontally. Okay, so in this we need figure 6.19 and we need the length. Length which is equal to, okay, it says the length of the material, so meaning it's not the horizontal centers, uh, that's going to be the length. This length so we have 200 squared plus 50 squared so we have uh, 206.30 so the horsepower required is we need to enter first in the in figure 6.19 and it says here uh, along the horizontal axis that's the length of conveyor in feet and we are here 200 yeah 206 so so we have 1 hp okay, so we have 1 hp times the capacity 
the required capacity 50 tons per hour divided by 100 tons per hour and that's going to be 0 0.5 HP therefore total HP is just simply the sum of the friction horsepower plus horsepower required to lift the material L plus HP H okay so this one is 1 HP plus 2.5 plus 0 0.5 okay that's um, 3.5 so that's 4 for HP okay so now let's solve for the idlers either spacing so either spacing we need table 5-2 and we need the belt width of 42 inches and you can see in the table that um, it only gives uh, a starting value from from the material density of 30 then 50 then 75 so we can just assume or you can just use 4.5 so that's going to be our spacing for the idler and transition distance so for the transition distance we have um, since um, trough angle is is 20 degrees then therefore our distance transition distance is equal to um, to three times the belt width three times belt width so three times 42 that's uh, 126 inches okay so um, now we've solved the details and now we have to provide a summary okay so for the summary we have um, let's start with the belt width so our our belt width is 42 inches and our belt speed is what's our belt speed uh, 200 feet per minute okay what else uh, our pulley diameter that's 10 inches and pulley face width that's 44 40, uh, 44 inches and the speed the speed is um, we can just write 75 or 76 uh, 76 rpm and what else and our horsepower oh by the way for our horsepower um we forgot to divide this um, for hp divided by the drive efficiency of 0 0.85 so that's gonna be 4 divided by 0.85 that's 4.7 HP. These are the figures, no electric motor size. Um, exactly as 4.7. So we just use 5 HP. Okay, so um, horsepower is 5 HP. And uh, by the way, um, we have to check if this is 
be three face or simple face. So I guess if you have this size, it's gonna be three face. I'm not sure. Anyways, that's how I practice. Or in my case, that's how I did it. Anyways, um, now we have the summary. We have all the details. Then we have to do the drawings. Now, in the drawing, I need to have a, for example, this is this will be our template. Then we need to have a um, I mean, for the first first sheet, we have to draw the. Maybe we can draw it something like this. Okay, so this is our belt conveyor. And since it's a draft and uh, draft conveyor, okay, and then our drive. So that depends upon you what type of drive you want so you can have a frame for example here then you have this electric motor and then the um, drive transmission and then of course if you have built-in pulleys or, sp or sprung and chains then you have to provide belt guards and things like that okay and this one probably the idlers Okay, and then provide your tension assembly here and what else of course it's not just a belt it must have a structure so let's say it's gonna be a truss truss structure and then of course there's gonna be some support or foundation or things like that and then you have to do supports here as well and maybe here as well okay and then you have to label the parts for example belt um, 42 inches uh, support drive okay so once you have done the um, isometric view then you have to also um, to label the assemblies like for example pulley tail pulley uh, here probably tensioner then probably here head pulley so you just have to label the the main assembly I guess okay so that's our isometric and then for for the elevation views then you can just I guess you can just draw inside view okay so once once you're in an elevation view and that's how, that's where you are going to put your dimensions is okay, so take no no dimensions for isometric views they're just labels but, um, but here in elevation views then you have to provide dimensions for example 200 feet and then this one of course your drive and your idlers spacing of idlers okay so spacing for example idler spacing okay and other details so here there's got to be a drawing title as well so you just write elevation p okay what else uh, the truss details so these are just basic drawings I, d uh, I don't require you to 
draw the full drawings I mean the full working drawings and you can just do this manually uh, no need for cats just this one okay and you can also you may also want to write pre I mean to include a, a feeder something like this whatever okay so um, now we'll we'll review our our procedures or steps okay so the first thing we did is to obtain the necessary information from the corresponding tables so the material code the flow ability surcharge angle then after that we we select the belt speed and we found out that we have a 200 feet per minute at 80 belt widths so that's going to be the maximum uh, belt speed okay so after that we solve for the equivalent capacity and the equivalent capacity we can we can enter the table table 4-2 and we can obtain the belt width so this will be the belt width 42 inches and after that we check for the lamp size and once you have checked for the lamp size let's write 1 of 4 then this one is 2 of 4 okay, so after that um, we solve for the Okay, and uh, the next step we did is to solve for the diameter of the pulley. So once we have the diameter, then we can obtain the the face width of the pulley. Then we can also calculate the RPM, the rotational speed. Okay, so after that, um, we can now solve for the total horsepower. So of course, we first solve for the fictional horsepower and we obtain a value of 1 HP and this is 3 or 4 we have uh, that we solve for the horsepower required to lift the material and we obtain 2.5 and then the HP sub H that's 0 0.5 and it's just the total of that divided by the drive efficiency that's gonna be our um, rated horsepower for the electric motor okay so after that we solve for the idler spacing and then the the transition distance by the way you would notice that our equation is i mean what we solve is probably the inlet would be from this point to to this point because there's gonna be a transition distance this is our pulley Okay, we're looking in an elevation view and this would be probably the the entry point okay so there's gonna be transition distance so in the homework or maybe if uh, if it's included in the in our homework I mean if the distance given is from this point to this point then that for example this will be our distance given then you have to um, to solve for the actual uh, I mean for the total length okay so after that we provided a summary and uh, as a requirement also a drawing a one sheet drawing for the for the equipment Okay, so now I guess we still have time, but I just want to to solve the horsepower requirement using the other method. So if we check the the first equation for the I mean the friction horsepower, we have this equation: the friction factor times the length plus the bearing factor times 0 0.03 times the weight of the mechanical components times the belt speed divided by 990 now for the friction factor if we assume uh, we'll use anti-friction bearings this one is 0 
and our f sub b this factor is 150 okay this weight we can obtain this from one pound per uh, per inch one pound per foot per inch of belt width okay so that's gonna be one times our belt width is 42 so we have 42 pounds per feet okay so if we substitute all the values we have 0 0.03 and our length that's the length from pulley to pulley that's 200 I guess 206 that's in feet plus 150 okay, times 42 pounds per feet and of course we forget this 0 0.03 times the belt speed of 200 feet per minute divided by 990 so if we solve this what you get is 2.72 hp now for the horsepower required to lift the material you have this uh, capacity in tons per hour times the height all over 990 that's going to be 50 tons per hour times 50 feet all over 990 that's going to be 2.5 hp and for the um, horsepower required to convey the material hor horizontally you have this equation l plus fb times the um, this is the capacity all over 990 well f sub this friction factor is 0 0.03 times 206 plus 150 times 50 all over 990 which is equal to 0 0.54 hp therefore the hp total is 2.72 plus 2.5 plus 0 0.54 all over 0 0.85 and we get 2.72 plus 2.5 plus 0.54 divided by 0.85 that's 6.77 HP okay so it turns out that we obtain a higher value as compared to the ones in When, when using the, the the graphic okay but there are also uh, I tried also problems with shorter distance then it turns out that you see this approach you get a lower value okay so in the end if um, I mean it all uh, boils down to the judgment of the design engineer okay so um this over the other one but I can say we want to be best but rather it's up to the judgment of the engineer okay to specify which um which value of the RS power and of course you have to make justifications and reasonable assumptions or explanations why why you you chose that value okay so i guess that's all for this topic on belt conveyor and next week we'll be discussing another type of conveying systems that's the pneumatic conveyors so it's different than the three conveyors that we discussed because uh, the next week topic the pneumatic conveyors it's about transport of bulk solids but by using air as the um, motive force all right so see you in the next um, video